Aha! Doesn't time fly when you're enjoying yourself? A very, very good evening to you. It's me, Scotty McClue, and we are, of course, live on the big one, one of the world's top broadcast platforms, Facebook Live. How marvellous is this? Here we all are together again, of course. It's Scotty McClue, the first lord of the internet and the world's top broadcaster, and I'm live with you for one hour, one hour only of superb, scintillating information, education and entertainment for not just one nation, but for every nation of the world. We depend, of course, on your goodwill, on your sharing and sharing and sharing and sharing. Get these numbers up. This is the world's top talk show, and it's here for you. So much to discuss tonight, so little time to do it in. Stephen Weymouth says, Dinky do, Scotty, dinky do to you, Stephen. Lovely to have you with us. It does fly from week to week, says Ben Lucas. It does, Ben. It absolutely flies. And we have so much to talk about tonight and so little time to do it in. So I hope you will get to your radios or your uh, phones or your PCs or wherever it is that you receive Scotty McClure. Good evening, Scotty, says Steve Burrows. And to you, Steve, lovely to have you with us. Dinky do. Spread the word that McClure is live, live right now on Facebook Live. Dinky do, Scotty, says Alfred James Wright. Good evening, says D. Gourley. And hello, Scotty, how are you tonight? Says Brian Keswick. Very, very well indeed, Brian. Lots to talk about tonight. Now, tonight, surprise, surprise, of course, Huge congratulations to Scotland on their massive, massive win for the Kolkata Cup at Murrayfield yesterday. That was absolutely tremendous. They played superbly, absolute top team, and of course they won for their country. And I don't know if you heard the singing of Flower of Scotland, but it was from the heart. It was absolutely fantastic. So I say... Thank you, thank you, thank you to every single member of the Scotland team, to every single one of you, also to every single member of the England team for being sports. You know, very, very important that as well. But there we are. But Scotland, of course, just walked away with it. Tremendous. The Calcutta Cup has come home. So there we are. Excellent stuff. And uh, I know you're all saying, come home. I mean, where is Calcutta, for goodness sake? Oh, Scotty, I've been here for half eight. What kept you, says Rab? No, no, what kept you, Rab? That's the thing. I was here in time. Uh, cheers to the pub last night, Scotty. How's it going, says Andrew Scott George? Fantastic, Andrew Scott George. A uh, lot of chat this week with top radio people, and there's even talk of um, enthusiastic investment in the Scotty McClure show on Facebook Live. How good is that? Uh, peoples from Bog Hall and Bathgate, Caledonia Pipe Band and the Police Fife Bands were magnificent yesterday, says Gordon Stirling. They were, they always are these bands, of course. We are talking some serious piping going on there. Tremendous stuff. So yes, I agree with you, Gordon Stirling. A big thank you to all our wonderful bands people. So there we go. How do you feel about the SNPMP referring to England rugby team as them? Well, no, I mean, I just think that they are as worthy of respect as any other sports people throughout the world. Everybody is worthy of respect. I have no time um, for anybody who's not respectful. So there you are. Scotty, do you think the no voters at Murrayfield should be banned from singing the Flower of Scotland? They could sing the Flowers of the Forest. <laughs> well, of course, Flower of Scotland is uh, not actually the national anthem for Scotland. The national anthem for Scotland is God Save the Queen. That's the national anthem for Scotland, but we like Flower of Scotland. Of course, it was written by uh, Roy Williamson, um, an old Gordon Stonian and a fine Scotsman. And uh, the Corries, one half of the, Sc of the Corries, a tremendous folk group who I like very, very much, who have done a lot for Scotland, a tremendous amount for Scotland, and also done a tremendous amount for music and for Scottish music in particular, keeping um, a lot of old songs going on, the green fields of France, things like that, tremendous westering home. Um, oh, there are so many. Don't start me, Loch Lomond. Don't start me on the Corries. 
I have always been in love with the Corrie's tremendous stuff. The pipers are full of wind, says George Raffin. Yes, you have to be, George. So there you are. So pop that in your drones and your blow stick and your chanter. And uh, who else have we got with us tonight? Oh, tremendous. A whole lot of you. I can see who's watching, but I shan't necessarily mention. You know who you are. Good evening, sir, says Joseph Gibbons. Good evening to you. Can you ban George Raffin, please, says Gordon Sterling. Uh, there you are, George. What about that? There's a demand for your banning. Quite a few people have been banned from uh, Facebook this week by me for swearing. If there's ever a sweary word, if somebody puts a sweary word in, I tend to just block them because I've got a lot of young followers and I don't want our young people growing up hearing that sort of language for no reason. So there you are. Uh, Murray Ramage and Martin Monaghan, fantastic stuff. Get a wee bit of the Proclaimers, says Rab Hill. Oh, if I could walk 10,000 miles, I'll tell you that. No problem at all. A wee bit of sunshine down in Leith where I used to work. Good evening, boss. Dinky do, says Murray. Good evening to you, Murray. Lovely to have you with us, of course. Tell ten, tell ten, tell ten, tell ten about Scotty McClue live on Facebook Live. And I hope you're managing to deal with the algorithm, fight the algorithm, because that means that only a few of you are actually permitted to see Scotty McClue. Nothing to do with me, of course. It's just the way of algorithms and bots nowadays but we'll sort it out there's a lot of enthusiasm for investment in scotty mcclue's program and of course if you could all dig into your pockets and find me a pound two pounds three pounds four pounds five pounds and stick it into either um paypal paypal.me forward slash scotty mcclue all one word or gofundme.com forward slash scotty hyphen mcclue you'll see them on the scotty mcclue website uh, hello scotty from belfast <coughs> there's the wonderful Jonathan Gold. Now, there's a man who is a superb talent. DJ for many, many years. Proper DJ, you know, knows all about music, can tell you all about music, entertain the nation, all that sort of stuff. The wonderful Jonathan Gold, and he's in Belfast. He was in Cork for a while. And, of course, I am a massive fan of Cork. I'm a massive fan of Jonathan Gold as well. So lovely to have you with us, Jonathan. Um, why... Uh, I don't bucket mouth, says George Raffin. Well, there we are. Everybody's entitled to their opinion, George. Uh, how close are we to a phone-in, Scotty? Well, we might start to do one tonight, guys. You can get me on Messenger, okay? Now, I don't want any potty mouths on. But if you want to discuss tonight's subject, we're going to discuss the guns in America, right? Now, guns don't fire themselves. So either you take the guns out of America or you take the miscreants out of America. Now, uh, as you well know, I am a crack shot myself. I, however, do not possess a firearm and uh, it would be licensed, of course. Um, and um, I don't shoot for the pot. So there you are. So I don't shoot at all nowadays. And um, there is absolutely no reason for anybody to have a gun unless they are a member of the military, a member of the security forces, a hunter, etc., etc. So I'm sorry, I don't hold with all this right to bear arms. The only bear arms you'll see from Scotty McClue are here and here. So there we are. Hiya, says Callum Murray. Hiya, Callum. Dave Mortimer, Dean Kidu, Scotty. This week, the Tories' Brexit plans will be ridiculed and voted down. The general election this year, methinks, says Ian. Well, interesting take on things, Ian. We shall see. We shall see. I think the backstabbers will leave Mrs. May where she is at the moment to be the fall guy for the whole Brexit thing. Remember, bless Mrs. May herself, she did not want to leave Europe. The whole British government did not want to leave Europe up until the EU. And to be leaving Europe on the strength of 4% um, either way is a piece of nonsense, especially since the bulk of stuff that was going on at the time was Duff Chen. So complete nonsense. So there we are. So I think that uh, people will be looking for a way out of Brexit. And the best way to do it would just be to um, to brazen it out and go back to Europe to Mr. Juncker and um, just to say, uh, look, um, we're sorry about all this stuff. Uh, now that we've seen the costs 
and had a look at things we've had another we think we're going to withdraw and rescind article 50 and we'll just press on as we were because what brexit actually is is a huge fight for what we already possess in abundance so there you go and it had um had the eu been around in 1940 we wouldn't have had the second world war thought isn't it so there you go um should kids who continually bully kids with adhd or autism be expelled scotty <coughs> or if living in council housing before some well nobody should ever be bullying anybody of course particularly we ones who are struggling with challenges and things like that but there should be no bullying of any kind i don't hold with it so there you are a good telling off for a wee one should suffice so there we are um jav salim dinky do phil signs watching order order would the right honorable gentleman please take his bonnet off in the house no 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 i uh, i am the speaker so i will be keeping my bonnet on this is the speaker's attire for this house okay so there you go if the remainers had won by four percent do you think they would have listened to the brexiteers morning scotty um no because i mean remaining is the status quo it's the same you've got to think carefully here right when you had the scottish referendum all that would have been required was anybody that wanted change to go and vote right and everybody else would be counted as status quo so the ones that wanted to actually have independent scotland would be otherwise you've got the status quo you just leave it um as it is and it's the same with this brexit thing only the brexiteers should have gone out to vote and everybody else counted as remaining i mean scotland by and large wanted to remain 67 percent am i correct uh craig's watching dinky do craig lovely to hear from you thinking about you guys today and sending lots of love to you and your lovely family it's republican politicians who should feel ashamed for taking money from the nra it's a disgrace says alfred james wright well when you think about it there should be no reason for things like the nra to actually exist there shouldn't be any guns it's time for america to move from the 18th century into the 21st century uh, that's what i would say and uh, and the same for the president as well there's a gentleman you'll see him on my facebook if you scroll down and um, he put uh, he put his uh, ak rifle through the um, through the the bandsaw that was the end of that you know and i think everyone should follow suit Sorry, I'm late, says David Fraser. I should think so too, David Fraser. Now, you're something of a Brexiteer, so perhaps you can put the case for Brexiteering. I call the Brexiteers, Brexiteers, E-A-R-S. There you are. The farmers this year are facing a hard harvest. No more EU funding, and the Tories don't give out funding. Well, the thing is, food's a tricky one, Ian. How do you grow food? I mean, if farming's a business, then you would just let them survive on their business. Now, what would happen there is that the price of food would go sky high because it would be expensive and the farmers need to get a living out of it. I can remember when you have rarely, rarely saw a poor farmer, a lot of wealthy farmers about and, uh, and, and what have you. And uh, now people are struggling because of the poor prices and also because of the supermarkets with the monopolies because if you think about it the corner shop would pay a fair price and would get a fair price from us so we need to look at that as well we need to perhaps think a little bit smaller uh, scotty once the brexiteers realize there's not enough labor to sustain growth what will their next scheme be well i think by the looks of the licking of the lips on a handful of the politicians um, I think they think they can make some money out of Brexit. You know, they're looking to treat the whole thing as a bit of a cash cow. But in actual fact, there'll be huge losses. And we have to be careful that muggins here, you and I, are not picking up the tab. Um, so there we are. Trump, Bolt, get McLuhan board. It'd be a laugh, says Rap. Well, there we are, yes, but we're not just wanting a laugh. Why don't we serious bit as well? 
You can have fun, but you need a bit of serious stuff. When it comes to the markets, Bloomberg are the experts. Search on the Bloomberg site and you'll learn the truth about Brexit. David, I know all about it. I watch Bloomberg, of course. You know, on Twitter, they're at business, a business. So there you are. Uh, it's all about China, says David. Well, yes, I would go along with that. I mean, China is building up massively, right? It's going to be a terrific force for the world. But when you think about it, People talk about Africa as being a very poor country, India as being a very poor country. These countries are very, 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 very wealthy countries. It's just the wealth hasn't been tapped yet. So there you are. Um, to grow the food, you need a good speed and a deep dig. Well, Michael McGuigan and I would always say a spear and Jackson, that's the one for you. Uh, the poor old farmers will be queuing up at the soup kitchens. They're a scourge of society. Says Gordon Stilling. Now, Gordon Stilling, the area where you live, of course, is so much the better for fine farming. They are wonderful, wonderful farming. Scotland is the breadbasket of the United Kingdom. So it's, uh, it's worth making a note about that. We are the UK's larder. Uh, so they are. that's why Westminster doesn't want to let Scotland go. Big panic. So there you are. Bridge from Scotland to Northern Ireland. Good idea, says Martin Murhan. Well, it's it's interesting. We'll need to see if this Brexit thing does go ahead, right? And they're all going, oh, yes, no, no, it's going ahead. We're leaving the EU. You know, <coughs> pardon me. <coughs> we sip of water. <coughs> That's you lot doing that to me. Mm. There we are. Um, fine words, I say, we're leaving the EU. But in actual fact, these people that are saying that don't know what's in store. And they don't know what's involved. So that's got to come out. The wonderful Colin Mews watching Dinky Doo, Alex Glass, Kevin Walker, Alan Cadden, Scotty. What do you think of John Redwood's tweet yesterday? Out of the EU, we can restore our farms. We moved from 95% self sufficiency in temperate products to under 70%. Our local supermarkets, Alan, I'm not going to press see more because it cuts the, the broadcast off. Uh, Barry Threlfall, big man, uh, he says, uh, what's the topic tonight, uh, says PJ Curry. PJ Curry, we're discussing the guns in America. If you want to come on Messenger and have a chat to me, feel free to do so. So just look up Scotty McLuhan Messenger and give us a ring. <coughs> the rich Chinese are all going to be driving McLean's. What's a McLean? Right, a Range Rover and Jaguar with Dysons in the back. So there you are. Very, very good. Brexit's the biggest threat to the Good Friday Agreement, Scotty. I don't care what they say. Of course, the Good Friday Agreement took a lot of time to put forward, but we need to see a lot more maturity from politicians. We need to see... I mean, I actually had to say to somebody recently, I'm so sorry, but I can't think that small. So there we are. We need to sort all that out. And um, water. Uh, I bet that's full of bodies. Rab. No, Rab, that's water. That's aqua. That is Adam's ale. Mm. There we are. I just had a week off there. Not a week off, but a week off. Because as you know, I had the largae. The Australian farmers, Scotland's market garden, and the farms survive in Eastern European cheap labour. Very few local people employed, says Gordon Stilling. Gordon, go along and get yourself a job. I remember watching, when I stayed in East Lothian, watching this incredible machine. And um, it was just like a, a wooden box machine being towed behind the tractor. And all the pages were uh, being spaced out. It was feeding the tatties onto the furrows. And I thought, isn't that a fabulous machine? And then it pulled up and um, all these people got out the back of it. <laughs> They'd been dropping the tatties through the flare. <clears throat> what do you think of David Mundell recently? So they were, well, I've always asked the question about the position of Secretary of State for Scotland, or Scottish Secretary, if you want to um, shorten it to the, the sort of more modern term. And I've always wondered, is that position to represent Scotland's interests in Westminster or Westminster's interests in Scotland. I think we need total clarification on the nature of that actual position. 
Uh, so there we are. But I'm not going to comment on an individual. Uh, so there we are. Barry Threlfall. If it's that small. Yes, indeed. We don't want to think small. And uh, John Toms. Good evening, Mr. McClure. Good evening to you, Mr. Toms. Nice to hear from you, of course. Excellent stuff. Hope you're keeping well. Uh, great Scottish businessman there. Good chat. The Spuds, says Michael McGuigan. I we have the Spuds. We have the Rasps. We have the Berries. Marvellous stuff. Scotty, I was up in Kearney in Aberdeenshire this weekend, and there were crops growing in the fields. It's winter. What grows in winter? Well, of course, the world is certainly warming. I mean, when people talk about global warming, we've always had global warming. That's what's brought us to where we are since the Ice Age. That's not rocket science, as I used to tell my friends at NASA. So there you are. Uh, Scottish farm produce will be for the wealthy. The rest will eat uh, African stuff after Brexit, says David. Very interesting. I definitely think stricter gun control needs to be put in place in America. Too many times we see innocent children killed. Trump wants to raise the age to 21, but that won't stop gun runners flooding there. Yes, of course, it becomes a business. Everything becomes a business. And uh, people like to flood the place with weaponry. And there's something tiny in a person's head that they think, I need to empower myself with a weapon, right? Anything that can't be sorted out with a good chat isn't worth having. So there you are. We don't want to live in that kind of society. Ronnie Stevenson, a shout out for Anne, Scotty. Anne, dinky do from Ronnie, and dinky do from me, Scotty McClue, to you as well. Marvellous stuff. Alistair Bajack, dinky do, George McFarlane, PJ Curry, the streets. Now, tell me more what you mean about the streets, PJ. Alex Robertson's watching one of our finest actors, Neil Tipping, one of our finest wizards of the big switchboard that Scotty McClure ever had down in Manchester there. So there we are. Um, yes, I'm going to accurately state acting in Scotland's best interest. I won't read that out, John, because uh, that's an opinion. So there you are. Uh, that's clarity as far as you're concerned. There will be another type of clarity from uh, others as well. After Brexit, we'll be eating insects, fried eerie wig, boiled beetle, toasted spider, says Ian. It'll be like being, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here after Brexit. We'll all be celebrities. Have you ever tried Maltese food? I've tried Maltesers, uh, loved them, fantastic stuff. But I can't say I've tried, I've not actually been to a Maltese restaurant, uh, Alan, so there we are. Uh, Ian Walker, be a veritable bush tucker trial every day so there you are absolutely i once lost my mobile phone and i felt like beer grills that's the nearest we've got it <clears throat> but um the most dangerous thing i've ever done really had an after eight at half past seven darren miller's watching dinky do how are you excellent to have you all on you're watching scotty McClue. if you've just joined us and you're wondering what on earth is this popping up on my facebook live it's me the world's top broadcaster, the first lord of the internet, on the big one, the one everyone's watching, the one everyone is talking about. Two million people have joined Scotty McClure since we started this, and there's talk of serious investment. So there we are. What have we got? Do you think the legal age to drive should be raised from 17 to 25? Under 21s should only be allowed out if their mum is in the passenger seat. You're taking a chance with some mums in the passenger seat. As John Toms, let's get to a Maltese restaurant then and give it a bash. Good for you, John. Thank God we're leaving Europe. Start Britain producing its own goods again. That'd be great, says Gordon Duffy. Now, Gordon, I used to have that argument in the radio about 15 years ago, right? Maybe even more now that I think about it. And um, the reason I had that argument was because at that time I could see that Scotland had um, Scottish towns and villages and cities had declined through the fact they'd gone into Europe. But Europe's been very, very generous to Scotland since then. The only thing is, if you think about our fishing, Aberdeen, when I was wee, massive fishing fleet. So there we are. Campbelltown in the west, Tarbert, Oban, Ardrishig, all fishing fleets, Caradale, tremendous stuff. 
Um, I've listened to you for years, says Gordon Duffy. So there you are. Well, you'll remember Gordon. Um, I went to Mary Poppins restaurant today, Scotty. Super cauliflower cheese. But the lobster was atrocious. So there is cauliflower cheese. So it was atrocious. Lovely stuff. We love it. Ian Hornby, Dinky Doo, Danny Casey, and John Tommy has just joined us. Fantastic. Welcome, 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 I say, to the Scotty McClure Show, one hour of superb scintillating information, education and entertainment, not just for one nation, but throughout the whole world. We are, of course, are at the mercy of the Facebook algorithm. So not everybody out of the 1.8 billion that could see the program can see it right now. So there we are. Bit of a shame that, but we'll keep working on it. And there's talk of a lot of investment in Scotty McClure's Facebook Live show, as well as talk about joining radio stations and television stations. So we're right now, we're at the table with big people. That's what matters. So there we are. It's been going on a while, but all the best things, good things come to them that wait. Ben Fasakali, Dinky Do, come and join us, private hire Uber. So there we are. Um, should we do more to make big companies pay their share? Says Martin Monaghan. Well, if I was the Chancellor, I would sit the big companies down and I would say, now look, guys, if you're going to operate on our territory, I mean, the government were quick enough to get rid of the, the pirate radio stations with the, um, the the shore laws, right? They were very quick to do that. So it can be done. So you said to these companies, look, if you're operating within the UK, you must account within the UK. And it should be the same. Scotland should be hanging on to its own income. Very, very important there. Uh, Europe stole the fish. The French closed the Scottish auto business. Um, I could go on and on, says David Fraser. Yes, all that happened, David, but you've got to look. That was then, this is now. You've got to look at what's happening right now. And coming out of the EU is probably not a terribly wise move. So there you go. The guy selling tiles up in Fort William are making a fortune because um, inadequate pothole repairs on the A82, says Ian. Very good, Ian. Yes, absolutely. There should be pothole repairs, but you, it's quite difficult. This is a balancing act with the roads, right? You can't have the fantastic road service that we do get, the terrific gritting, gritting by all the different regions up in the highlands there, Tremendous down the central belt, tremendous support, right? A lot of roads that were absolutely lethal recently and might be in the next week or two, who knows? All the terrific gritting, all the wonderful work done by our road people. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, we are now left with potholes. Now, as far as I can ascertain, some of the potholes are caused by the chemicals others are caused by water getting into the fissures and expanding uh, becoming ice and expanding and opening up the tarmac one thing we could look at all this plastic that is adrift around the world apparently that can be recycled into road surfacing and it's much harder than what we've got at the moment so that's worth looking into so there you go there Shared on two radios, Scotty McClure, all the best, fantastic. Thank you, dear, and a very, very warm welcome to everybody in True Radio. Welcome to the Scotty McClure Show. We are, of course, live on Facebook Live. That's the big one, the one everyone's watching, the one everyone's talking about. This is the new television. Trust me. So there you are. Uh, remember, Scott McClure has always been ahead of his time, so there you are. And I know I might be knocking on a bit, and I might be no oil painting, but nevertheless, this is what I look like. If you've got a problem with Scotty McClure, that's your problem. So, excellent stuff. Councils are now using, um, oh, for goodness sake, PJ Curry, what nonsense are you at? Uh, you're a very smart man, but have you ever walked about uh, the way your sock, with your socks on the wrong feet? Yes, I can do that some mornings. Uh, or two legs down the one trouser leg. Should councillors miss that one? Good evening, Scotty McClure. Should Hollywood push to have more progressive tax powers for investment? Too much emphasis on cutting. There should be no cutting. There's plenty of money about. There are billions floating about in Westminster because Thatcher stole all of Scotland's money and took it to London to make London a great centre. And of course, all your towns are struggling now. You look at all the Scottish towns and villages. They're a shadow of their former selves. 
because Mrs. Thatcher thought she'd grab all the money, she'd sell off the shipyards cheap. Look at the Clyde, look at Greenock and Gurok and Paisley and Kilmarnock and Hamilton and Motherwell and Bathgate, you know, Linwood, all that sort of stuff. Look at all these places struggling while people are paying 50, 60 million for a townhouse in London. That money has been taken from Scotland and needs to be returned. So, a check to Holyrood ASAP, Westminster, I say. 76 is the new 50. How many years left in you? Um, help my bob, says Austin Butler. Austin, uh, I was talking to a lady recently. She said, how long are you planning on working, Mr. McClure? I said, up until lunchtime on the day of my funeral. And then I will have to get changed because there might be some people coming. So there you are. We've got about 20 years to go. Fantastic. Who's this? Hello, Rab. It'll take a wee second to come through. We've got a call, guys. There we are. Take a wee second to come through. Hello, Rab. Can you hear me? Dinky doo. Here he comes. Hello, Rab. How are you? He's ended it. He panicked. Sorry. There you are. Rab, if you're coming on, you must bear with it. Give the call a chance to get through, and we can catch up with you then. Frank Crombie, a very good evening. What do you think of the new world order, Scotty? Says Kevin Pearson. Well, it's the same as the old world order. The only thing is the money's not really in the hands of the families. No, the money is in the hands. It's not in the hands of the aristocracy to the same extent. It's in the hands of the global corporations. So that's where the big money is. Um, so that's what I think about that. Elizabeth Campbell's watching Dinky Do. Remember, you'll always get uh, truth and justice on the Scotty McClure show. That's what it's all about, Dinky Do. Uh, Rab's in a phone box up in Sky, says Ian. Yeah, no, Rab can come on again, but he needs to hang on and we'll pick up his call. If you're phoning in, you can phone in to me on Messenger. So just grab your Messenger and speak to Scotty McClure and I'll take your call. But... I have to say, you must let it filter through. Don't panic and think, oh, can I get them? Can I get them? That's just a nonsense. Going to have a, a bit of a share here, guys. So there you are. There's Rab waving at us. Fantastic. And uh, we'll give him a bit of... Uh, so there we are. Call back. <laughs> there we are. I'm talking to Rab on Messenger here. So I'm just going to put call back, guys. And we'll see if he's up for that. There we go. Right. <clears throat> Now, <coughs> we need a sip of water. Mm. So there we go. Uh, uh, £1.10p, says Stephen Wainwright. Yes, I can remember making a trunk call um, from, uh, I think it was from Mull, from Tubbermory. Yes, a trunk call, and you had to put one thruppence in the box. So there you are. You picked it up and spoke to the operator. You went, trunks, please. And she said, yes, where are you calling? So Glasgow, yes, that'll be one and threepence. And you said one, put your shilling in, and then you went one, two, three. Lovely, putting you through now. Dee, dring, dring. Hey, I've told ten to tell, ten to tell, ten to tell, ten, says Martin. Excellent, Martin. Tell Rab the pips mean you have to put your frappany, your frappany bit in. <clears throat> so there we are. Hey, PJ Curry, huge explosion on Hinkley Road in Leicester just now. Right, PJ, we shall check that out. Thank you for that. Um, I've got to come back on the phone again, Scotty, to get it started. Stephen, why not? It won't do any harm. It was lovely to talk to you last week. And people need to, um, you, you know, grow a set and come on and talk to Scotty McClure. Here's Rab back. Right, so we'll see if we can get a hold of him. Right, Rab. Now, this time, give it a wee chance, Rab, all right? Don't panic it. Yes? Problem with Rab's call is he panicked. He panicked. <clears throat> Hello, Rab. Can you hear us? Here, it's just going to pop up now with a bit of luck. Unless he panics again. So there we go. Um, Nick Baldy watching. Dinky do, Nick. Lovely to have you with us. If you've just joined us, a very warm welcome. You're watching oh. Scotty McLean. Hello, Rab. Can you catch you, please? Can you catch me? Okay, I can get a taxi. A taxi? Oh, is this your own number? I'm sorry. This is Scotty McClure. <laughs> yeah, Dafty. How are you doing, my man? How are you doing, my man? Are you all right? Can I'm you can sorry. you hear me? Can, what? Can you hear me? I think you've got a stutter. I was trying to say that. I did. Have you listened? Yeah. 
Did you listen? No. No. No? Why? Can you not? Hello? Can you what? Can you, hello? Can hello? you hear me? No. We seem to have lost you. How? I don't know. I, 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 think you've, I, I think you've lost the plot. Lost the plot? Absolutely. I think you <laughs> lost the plot a long time ago. How are you getting on? I'm, I'm all right. I'm on your That's good. Yes, excellent. I'm glad that you've hung on there. You panicked the first time and did one. Well, I was fear I was busting for the toilet. You that, ran that away. Sight. You ran away. That was the way. Well, you need to get right, all that, that stuff down. That, that, that would just be excitement about speaking to Scotty McClure. I always get excited talking to you, Scotty. You know that. <laughs> Lovely to hear from you. <laughs> hey, and I'm glad you made the call, mate, because that just sets everybody up. It's dinky do. I don't don't be pee my phone number at MD. No, no, I, nobody's got anything. Dodgy, do, case I get dodgy phone call. No, that remains between you and I. <laughs> and dinky do. <laughs> take care, of my man. Take care, of my boy. So there we are. Nick says take the mince. I think we're taking the mince, Nick. To be quite honest, I watched the show again last week. You said hello to a good half dozen times, Scotty. I only heard you say it once. Scotty takes a long time to connect says uh, Stephen, no, it just takes a wee while. Um, so there we are. So is that a Rangers song you're singing, says Ian Walker? Don't be ridiculous, Ian. We don't do that on here. I collect 1970s sitcoms. Do you have a favourite from this era? Well, we like On the Buses, don't we? We enjoyed On the Buses. And do you remember uh, Reggie Perrin? Reggie Perrin was excellent as well. I quite enjoyed Reggie Perrin. And, uh, and things like that. So would that be 1970s? Um, also, Dad's Army, of course. We quite like that one. That one's still about. Uh, so there you are, stupid boy. Uh, excellent. What ones are you talking about? And you tell us what your favourites are. Uh, so there you are. What was the ones? Um, there was... Um, oh, what was the one? Was it Robin's Nest? So there you are. Am I in the right one? I'm in the right one, so there we are. Mildred and I. Ain't half hot, Mum, says Ian Walker. Oh, you're quite right, Ian. It's four, it's four down here, I'll tell you that. Oh, nice pair of shoulders, boy. Show them off, show them off. Windsor Davis and Lofty. Uh, excellent stuff. Great points being raised tonight, but let's hear more of the nation's voice, says Phil Syme. Phil, make a call right now, and let's hear from you. There's nothing like setting an example. 1970s sitcoms were great, the likes of Ain't Half Hot Mum, and so on. There's two of you mentioned Ain't Half Hot Mum. I found that genuinely funny. Um, Karen Martin, Dinky Doo, till death us do part, says Neil Tipping. Now, apparently, right, and this is just what I heard, uh, that uh, when the BBC um, first sort of started putting together till death us do part, they thought the nation would be against Alf Garnet, they would say, what a bigoted old fool, and of course, everybody went bananas for Alf Garnet. Then he's quite right, quite right, yeah, yeah, all that sort of stuff. So there you are. Mind your language, and some mothers do have them, says Alan Cadden. I did love some mothers do have them, and I've got a lot of time for, uh, for uh, Frank Spencer, of course. I thought tremendous, but sometimes it was almost too funny. I remember having a chat with the late, great Walter Carr, who was a wonderful comic actor, very, very talented man, Walter Carr. Uh, he was Doogie the Mate in the BBC's Parahandy series. But Walter was a, he was a superb, serious actor as well, and a great comic actor, a wonderful actor. And um, he said to me, he said, son, never be too funny. So there you are, quite interesting, interesting thought that. So there we go. Uh, yes, mind your language. You look a bit like Captain Mannering, says David Fraser. Well, I've got the wee round glasses, David, when we put these on. Uh, I watch Faulty Towers. It's on in the afternoon, says Andrew Thompson. Tremendous stuff, Andrew. Till death is true part and love thy neighbour would cause uproar now, says Stephen Wearmouth. Uh, Scotty, why is someone else doing pick of the pops on a Saturday afternoon? That's Tony Blackburn's job says Ian, so there you are. Yes, everybody's got their favourites. The old grey whistle test. Remember the old grey whistle test? Does anybody know how it got its title? Do tell me. Rigsby, Mr Rigsby, rising damp. Yes, absolutely. On the buses, 
says Gordon Sterling, oh, you were just watching to hear them start up Gordon Sterling and uh, think about the joy of jumping on at the back when the bus started to move and the big gardener in there giving it boom, 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 boom. Was there not such a thing as a Leyland Arab? So there you are. I think there was. But uh, do tell Gordon Sterling, spill, 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 spill. spill. That's what I say. Right, if you've just joined us, a very, very warm welcome. Oh my goodness, would you look at the time? We're about three shares short tonight. Normally we share at 15, 30 and 45. So can we have a big share, everyone? Share, share right now. In fact, I'll do it here as well. I think this is very important. So I'm just going to do a share, if that's okay with you guys. And if you can all do the same, share the Scotty McClure show. We are live, and we're live on Facebook Live. And I can see this show doing very, very well for a television company, where they've got a bit of sense, right? You'd be amazed at the television and radio companies at the moment that are desperate for audience. But uh, they need to have Scotty McClure if they want audience, right? Because their problem is they put on big television names who everyone's heard of but doesn't necessarily want to talk to. See, what these people don't understand is talk radio is nothing to do with just talking. It's a listening job. So there we are. So talk radio, very specialist. I can remember being uh, the only person that understood talk radio in a meeting. And nobody even asked me a question. They're all falling over themselves about, oh, we could do this. And what about that for an idea? Oh, that'd be brilliant. And I was sitting there and I thought, that will never work. And I know why. But they wouldn't let me speak. So there you are. Um, did you ever listen to Wogan doing those Janet and John stories in Radio 2? Stephen Wearmouth, I listened to Wogan every morning. He was my absolute radio god. Wonderful, wonderful guy. I'd love to have met him. And I would love to have had a crack at that Radio 2 show in the mornings as well, talking away to the nation, because uh, that was one of my great dreams. Now, Susan Forrest, wonderful lady, the Liver Birds. Yes, absolutely, the Liver Birds. They were tremendous. And am I not right in thinking that the lady that's a, one of the ladies that's in Emmerdale at the moment, that plays Diane, was she not involved? in these early programs as well. Tremendous actors in in Emmerdale. I do love it. I'll say this only once. Oh, hello, Scotty. Now, Arthur James Wright, I love hello because it was just such a scream. It was the sort of melodramatic side of it, you know. And uh, when the policemen used to come in, of course, you know, and the good morning. <laughs> that sort of stuff. Uh, Citizen Smith, says Charles McLaughlin, when they pressed old records, they would play it to people and called it the Old Greys. Well, as far as I know, David, you're, you're, you're close. I'm not going to say yet. There's more to it. There's Adam M. Fuller. Fantastic stuff. Lovely to hear from you, Adam. And uh, I hope you've recovered from your shock about the two grumpy critics. So there we go. T double O. Uh, guys, if you want to hear Scotty Blue being interviewed by two T double O grumpy critics, then uh, do look it up there. It's well worth the listen. It's on YouTube, Scotty McClue, T double O grumpy critics, and you'll get an interview there. Hair Flick! Yes, we liked Hair Flick, and we loved Helga, of course. Tremendous stuff. Uh, Jack Patterson, Dinky Do. I loved Wogan Scotty, genuinely upset when he left us, says Stephen Weymouth. I think millions upon millions would be very upset when Terry passed on, especially so young and when he just left the radio. So there you are. I hadn't been long away from the radio and what have you. And I heard his Janet and John's terrific stuff, his stories. The man was an absolute genius. He knew how to use a camera. He knew how to use a microphone superbly. Uh, you know, he was even cleverer at the microphone than the camera, because you have actually have to be. But remember, it's the theatre of the mind. A mind prisoner cell block each with a wobbly walls. <laughs> if you want to see wobbly walls, uh, or you want to see sort of a set, watch the old man from Uncle. It's back on. That was tremendous. Then do you know what Uncle stood for? So there we are. 
And um, who else have we got? Arthur's watching. Didn't you do Arthur Davis? If you've just joined us, folks, a very, very warm welcome. You're watching Scotty McClure, the world's top broadcaster, the first lord of the internet. And we are, of course, live on Facebook Live, one of the world's great broadcast platforms. Great things are about to be unveiled for McClure. So stick with us. Watch this space. We are, of course, at the mercy of the algorithm. So there we are. So not all of you, not all of the uh, 1.8 billion who could see the show can see it right now, but uh, you will do. So there we are. There's a lot of talk of some serious investment. A couple of VIPs um, have shown a terrific interest in what I'm doing on Facebook Live, and they want to have a meeting as well to talk about investment and perhaps buying a little bit of advertising and uh, getting some equipment for the show the rest of you if you'd still like to put your pound in or your two pounds or your three pounds remember scotty McClure accepts a plaza derision on his merits so there you are so um if you want to stick something into gofundme.com forward slash scotty hyphen McClure or paypal.me forward slash scotty McClure all one word please feel free to do so you'll get it at the Scotty McClue website, www.scotty-mcclue.com, where well over 10 million people have visited that website. And over 2 million have seen this program since we started last year. How tremendous is that? Scotty, uh, is Close Brothers going back to you? So there we are. Kevin Pearson, don't quite know what you mean by that. Are you going on Strictly, Scotty? Strictly come dancing, my goodness. It would need to be Jimmy Shand for me to do Strictly come dancing. I reckon you could have had a good crack at the lunchtime slot when Jimmy Young packed in Scotty instead of um, the present gentleman, says Stephen Weirmouth. Jimmy Young again, if I could, I would listen to Jimmy Young. The only thing is, for many, many years, I was broadcasting at that time right across central Scotland on scott fm i was on from nine until midday so i couldn't actually very well listen to jimmy young and radio 2 when i was broadcasting to every single one of you on scott fm scotty the last time you were on the radio did you have a gramophone and a dunk i was the last time i was on the radio was last year they are a lot of people don't realize this they think scott fm you left there and that was the end of it no 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 I'm into my 26th year of broadcasting uh, as the Scotty McClure Show. Fantastic stuff. A great show, Scotty, says Maggie Burrows. I thank you, Maggie. Lovely to hear from you. This is what we call communication. This is what we call interaction. This is uh, what you would offset the massive, massive um, raft of loneliness that is sweeping across the Western world at the moment. So there you are. That's because we don't have the radio phone-ins. And I think I would quite like the BBC to start with a national phone-in for Scotty McClue um, or put us on television even for half an hour and I say half 11 till midnight. I was sorry when you mentioned Ruth is up in doggy heaven. Would you get another dog, says Adam Fuller. I've had one. He's almost 12, Adam. Uh, the one I've got now, Clyde, is, uh, is in his 12th year, a gorgeous wee guy. So there you are. You'll see him on some of the videos. But he's not uh, very interested in getting his photo taken. Wreath, love having his photo taken. You'd say, you're going to get your photo taken, boy. And you'd go, oh, what side would you like of me? Yes. And he would sit still. You'll see beautiful pictures of Wreath. Four feet of ice for Scotty to skate about on his ramp. Yes, we'd need to strengthen the ice. I say, evening, Scotty. Um, do you like the program still game? I do. I don't want people to think that that is Scottish culture, though. But I do like the program still game. And I think I would like a wee part on still game because it's interesting that it came into being uh, just after Scotty McClue came into being and they saw the value of the bonnet. I'll tell you that. Scotty, you're more popular than the Royals, says Ian Walker. I'll tell you something, Ian Walker. I can remember going on a uh, uh, public uh, day out in Wishaw. And when I arrived, I genuinely, genuinely was taken aback by the crowds. 
I was in a beautiful big limousine, and I got out of the windows, shooting and balling, half dressed. I was shouting and balling back at them, of course. Great fun, a wonderful day out. So if you remember Scotty McLean's visit to Wishy, uh, tremendous stuff. So there we are, Charles McLaughlin. Scotty, I would fire, and he mentions another broadcaster, and give you a slot, and get some sense talked. Oh, we would, we certainly would. The 26th anniversary is pictures according to Google. Yes, 26 years, that's right, David Fraser, you're spot on, that's what I said. Can you mind Dr. Dick's Midnight Surgery, Scotty, and Radio Clyde? I can, Rab, yes, I remember it, with Richard, Richard. Uh, Richard Park on Dr. Dick's Midnight Surgery. And uh, I would I would not mind it actually doing stuff across Clyde and Forth at night as well. There's a lot of talk of that. Uh, Scotty, uh, the finale of Blake 7, the biggest anti-climax of a television programme ever. Biggest anti-climax of a television programme ever, Blake 7. Let's have some more hearts and some more thumbs up, guys. Tap, 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 come on. Get on to your devices there. I want to know that you're all out there and watching. Hi, Scotty. I've seen him. He's an adorable cutie like you. I've missed you. But I've still been share, share, sharing. Still love you, Scotty McClure, Shelley Boyle. Now, Shelley Boyle is a very, very talented broadcaster in her own right. And if you go on to YouTube and put in Scotty McClure talks to Shelley Boyle. H-E-L-L-E-Y. And then Boyle, of course, B O Y. E. And uh, she does her own radio program it extremely well, if I may be allowed to make an observation. So there you are. Lots of love to you, Shelley. And Dinky Do. Hi, Scotty. Uh, says, oh, sorry. James Myers watching Dinky Do. Uh, fantastic stuff. Scotty, I've just tuned in. I'm late, says Dino the Doug. You are very, 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 very late, Dino the Doug. Do not be late again. Lots of thumbs up, lots of hearts. Fantastic. Come on, guys. Let's see that you are out there. Uh, sorry, do you remember two STV presenters, Bill Tennant and Michael O'Halloran? I did. Yes, Bill Tennant was a wonderful presenter, terrific man. And I can remember at Murrayfield, right, yesterday, fantastic, the Calcutta Cup at Murrayfield. Now, I remember going to the Calcutta Cup at Murrayfield. Ooh, you'd be talking maybe around 1970. And STV's executive car was there, STV1. Fantastic. And it was a Vauxhall Viscount. I think it was actually um, dark navy blue, beautifully polished up. And in the back was Bill Tennant. He was a massive, massive celebrity. A great guy. Michael O'Halloran, of course. I remember Michael. Michael, if I remember right, was... I think Michael was a major in... Was it the Grenadier Guards or the Scots Guards? So there we are. And, uh, of course, a tremendous announcer. And I remember all these terrific announcers. Uh, Gordon Roddick joined us one night. Gordon Roddick, a wonderful, wonderful broadcaster. Very distinguished announcer on Scottish television. And, of course, it was um, Sir William Brown, the late Sir William Brown, Bill Brown at Scottish television that got me interested in working for ITV. So there you are. Terrific stuff. Uh, thanks for that. You're a sweetheart, says Shelley Boyle. Not at all, Shelley. You deserve it, my darling. Uh, remember Bill Tennant. He read the news. Yes. And the late John Toy. Uh, bless him. A very talented newscaster as well. Very talented actor, John Toy. And if I remember right, his father was something very senior in opera. So there you are. John Toy. Terrific stuff. These were wonderful, wonderful people. And of course... It was very difficult to find people that could do television in these days. Do you remember the one o'clock gang? Things like that. Where do you park the horse and cart at Murrayfield, Scotty? We used to meet under the clock. It was open. You didn't have that. You were in the terracing. There was the stand, but we stood in the terracing. And we all met under the clock. And you met all your pals throughout Scotland. Uh, and then we used to go and have a light refreshment. Uh, in Edinburgh, very often into the Rutland Hotel or somewhere like that, or the Murrayfield Hotel. Tremendous stuff and a light refreshment. Uh, I drank in Bill Tennant's pub in Mary Hill, the Happy Dragons. Wow, fantastic. I think Bill had an hotel as well, was that right? Scotty, we haven't a squeeze for a good couple of weeks. Now, Wayne gives a tune, says Stephen. How are we, man? Uh, Scotty, 
I scattered my mother's ashes in the wee church up in Kearney beside my dad's. I hope you're allowed to do that. Well, it's done now. Ian, I think you should be allowed to scatter ashes wherever you like. So there you are. It's wonderful stuff. And um, it's great stuff. Excellent. So there we are. And uh, they have to go somewhere. I can remember working on the boats in the Clyde as a cabin boy when I was a young boy. And I, I got a taste for show business. One night, um, we had to go down to Rothsey. There was a seamen's strike on in 1969. And we went down to Rothsey to bring back, I think it was the Alexander Brothers. Uh, and, and we brought them back from Rothsey. They'd been doing a show in Rothsey. Rothsey was still showbiz time. Excellent stuff. Rain Town at Oran Moor on April the 28th. Come along and enjoy the show, says James Bower. What a lovely invitation, James. Thank you for that. And um, excellent. Guys, what a fabulous show tonight has been. You guys are amazing. Absolutely. And we've only got a few minutes left, so let's use it well and wisely. And um, I do have a squeeze box. I do have the squeeze box. I might manage to give you a wee tune. If you're all very, very good. So here we go. Right. <clears throat> in the squeeze box for you. No, 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 the squeeze box. Time for a break. Ian Walker, he can't cope with it at all. The neighbours will be calling the police, says James Bower. So there we are. Well, I can knock up to the neighbours. Oi! Settle down up there, for goodness sake. So there you are. Excellent stuff. Uh, Dina the Doug, are you in a different studio? The background looks different. No, no, we're in the same studio, Dino. The Doug, not a problem. Go on, Scotty lad, says Stephen Wearmouth. Fantastic stuff. So there we are. Anybody recognise the tune? Jay Watts just joined us. Dinky Doo Jay. Lovely to have you with us. And of course, a massive thank you to every single one of you who has joined us tonight. If you want to make a quick call on Messenger, we might just squeeze you in with the squeeze box. Um, you have so much knowledge. You're a genius. I'm seriously amazed. You're, you're amazing, Dinky Doo. I love your love it's very interesting to hear you uh, tomorrow. So good night and have a great night. Night night and all that, says Shelley Boyle. Shelley Boyle, there's more to read there, but I don't risk pressing uh, see more because it cuts the broadcast off. So there you go. Guys, uh, do us a, a favour and share and share and share this like crazy. McPherson's farewell. McPherson's rant. Yes. Uh, McPherson's farewell. Is that the same as McPherson's rant? The snow forecast says Frank Crombie. So there we are. Well, early start for McClue. Uh, you're an encyclopedia, Scotty, says James Bower. Nearly lights out, says Ian Walker. Yes, Ian. I know you've been looking forward to lights out for an hour. So there you are. Dear the Doug, when you get five free lessons, you're supposed to attend the other four. Still the Doug. <laughs> we love it. McClue on the squeeze box. Now, before you go, type in, would you like to hear McClue on the radio or see him on the telly? Right, now I know, I don't want comments about you know what painting I, I know that. I know what I look like, so I'm actually looking at myself right now. Right, and that's just because I've been on the earth for a long time. Right, there's somebody giving us a wee call. Fantastic stuff. Oh, it's a rab. Right, shall we take it? No, he's gone. He's gone anyway. No problem at all. So there we are. Lucky escape there. Telly and the radio, Scotty, says James. No, I know the song. Know the song, says Ian Walker. Yes, the song, Ian Walker. It's time for the song. Are we all going to join in? Right. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. 
Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody, of Wheaters Zane. Au revoir and a cheerio. Cheerio, loves, thanks so much for watching tonight. We'll see you all next Sunday, God willing, weather permitting, at the same time, 9 o'clock sharp. And we are live here on Facebook Live. From every single one of us, this is Scotty McClue saying to every single one of you, Thanks for watching, and of course, dinky-doo, have a great week, loves. Scotty McClue has left the building.